Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending this session. The topic of this session is how we optimize Spark SQL jobs with parallel and asynchronous I.O. in Badass. Uh, my name is Guo Jun, and my English name is Jason. I'm the lead of data engine team at Badass. Uh, let me introduce who we are. Um, we are data engine team at Badass. We built a platform of one-stop experience for OLAP, on which users can analyze PB-level data by writing SQLs without caring about the underlying execution engine. And what do we do? We manage Spark SQL and the Presto and the high workloads. We offer open API and a self-serve platform. And also, we optimize Spark SQL and the Presto and the Hive engine. Besides, we design data architecture for most business lines of Bana, of Bana Dance. Here's the ag agenda for this session. Firstly, I will introduce the Spark SQL at Bana Dance. And then I will explain why does IO matter for Spark SQL. Then I will introduce how we boost Spark SQL jobs by parallel and asynchronous IO. Lastly, I will introduce the field, what we will do in the near future. Let's go to the first part, Spark SQL and Bad Dance. We, we adopted Spark SQL in 2016 for small scale experiments. And then in 2017, we used Spark SQL for ad hoc work workload. And in and in 2018, Spark SQL is used for, for some of the ETL pipelines in production. Uh, in 2018, Hub is the most commonly used uh, exclusion engine for ETL jobs, and uh, few ETL pipelines are running on Spark SQL. And, in, and then in 2019, most of the newly created ETL pipelines are running on Spark SQL. In 2020, Spark SQL is the main engine in data warehouse area, both for ETL jobs and end hoc queries. Now, in 2021, 20, Spark SQL has totally replaced the hub for ETL jobs, which means that all the existing hub ETL jobs are migrated to Spark SQL. So in Badass, all the ETL jobs are running on Spark SQL. No have anymore. Okay, let me explain why does IO matter for Spark SQL. We, we noticed that IO performance has been improved, has, has been improved in the past years. But we, we think IO is still the bottleneck for big data processing. Let's go to the first part. Uh, I.O. performance has been improved. We know that NVMe SSD performed much better than HDD, maybe by two magnitudes. And more and more new hardware have been in invented in past years, such as AEP. The performance is much, much better than HD HDD, even though it's much, uh, um, even though it, it is much uh, expensive. So many papers show that I.O. is faster than CPU. What we need to optimize is CPU, not I.O. But as we as in our practice, we observed that I.O. is still the bottleneck for big data processing for industry. Firstly, firstly the total cost of ownership is one of the most important factors for huge data storage. Performance is important, but TCO is, is also another important factor for huge data storage. And most of the servers have a, have a lot of HDD disks, especially for Hadoop clusters. In Badance, a, a, large, a large amount of Hadoop cluster servers have a lot of HDD and they, they may contain a few SSD or even no SSD. So 
And we observed that IO cost contributes more than 30% or even more than 40% of total latency of, of Spark Spark SQL ETL jobs. So this is why we, we think that IO is still the bottleneck for big data processing. And this is why we think it's worth to optimize the IO for Spark SQL. Okay, let's go to the next part. How we boost Spark SQL jobs by parallel and uh, asynchronous I.O. Before that, we, uh, I, I'm, I'd like to introduce the Parquet. As we know that Parquet is a columnar storage format. And in better dance, Parquet is the most commonly used file format, especially for data warehouse. Only in this picture, in this picture, the black, the black box is a packet file. And each packet file may contain a header, four bytes header. And the header is a magic number. After that, there will be one or more row groups following by a header. Each, each packet file will have, a, will have a, a footer. For each row group, for each row group, uh, each row group may contain one or more column chunks. One or more column chunks. Each column chunk will contain all the tuples. I mean, all the elements for that column. For example, there are four columns for this packet file. Column column A, B, C, and D. So there will be four column chunk for each row group. And the column chunk A will contains all the elements for column for, for column A. And also column chunk B will contain all the tuples, all the elements for column B. So and for each and each column chunk will can will can consist uh, are consist of one or more pages, data pages. Each page may uh, well contains a header and the repetition levels, definition levels, and the no and the non law uh, values. Uh, different different column chunk may have different number of uh, data pages, but in a in a single row group, each column chunk will have the the, the number of tuples for uh, different column chunks will be the same. So this because parquet will split the data by by row into different row group and then split the data by column into different column chunk. And besides the row group, there will be a footer for each parquet parquet file. In the footer, there, there are many metadata, uh, file level metadata and row group level metadata. For each row group, the footer will store the, col uh, the column metadata, for example, the mean and the max values and the number of values, and also the offset of first data page, the first index and the offset for uh, the first index page. And when we need to, um, it's, it's worth noticing that row group is a small, the smallest unit for Spark to read the packet file. In another word, a row group can only be read by a single task. It's, it's, uh, it's not impossible, it's not possible for Spark to read a single uh, row group by different Spark tasks. Okay, this, this, uh, this is how Spark reads the uh, packet file. Let me introduce how Spark SQL split with a large with a large packet files file. Spark SQL will split a large packet file into a group of splits, each of which will contain one or a few row groups. Each task will read this row group sequentially. For example, in this picture, there there are six. Uh, the this packet file contains six row groups 
row group one, two, and three, four, five, six, six row groups in a single packet file. And if the, because this packet file is large enough, so Spark decided to read this packet file uh, within two Spark tasks. And, this, and each task will read three row groups. Let's take it into uh, uh, for uh, task one. The task one will read three row groups. Row group one, two, and three. Because and, and, the, and this task will read these row groups one by one, which means that only when the task only when the task finish reading row group one, can the task one read the next row group. Okay. If the packet file is small, then there may be a large number of small packet files. Then Spark SQL where uh, can combine a group of small packet files into a single split. You know, uh, each split will be handled by a single task. Each task will read these files, these small files in a single group sequentially. For example, there are four packet files. Each packet file contain, contains only one row group and each packet file are small packet files. So Spark decided to read these four packet files with, uh, with two tasks. And each task will read two small packet files. For example, the task one will read packet file one and packet file two. Again, the, ta the task can only read these two small files one by one. Read, it, read the file one and then read the file two. Okay, let me uh, compare the sequential read IO and the parallel IO. By default, Spark can only, uh, can only read the data one by one in, in a sequential way. So IO and the computation are, are, handled, are handled in a single thread. The I.O. and the computation are handled sequentially by the same thread. That is only one thread. And the tuples in a single task are computed sequentially. I.O. for different files or different row groups are handled sequentially. So we can, so by default, Spark will read a group of data and then convert and then finish the computation and then read another group of data and then do the computation. What we do is that when we want to do this in a parallel way, and we separate the IO and the computation in, into different threads, we introduce a buffer to separate the IO and the computation. IO and the computation will be handled in separated threads or thread pool. IO for different files or row groups can be done in a, in a parallel approach. Yeah, uh, these two pictures shows how the row level, row group level parallel IO and the file level par parallel IO. On the left side, the picture shows the row level, row group level parallel IO. In task one, we say uh, in the middle of task one, there is a buffer. We introduce a buffer to separate the I.O. and the computation. On the left of the buffer, there is the I.O. thread pool. There are more than one thread in this thread pool. And on the right of the buffer, there is the computation thread. So the thread pool, the thread pool will read the three uh, row, groups, row groups in a parallel way. Maybe there are more than three threads. So each thread can read a row group and this row group can be read uh, concurrently. The, concurrently. And all the data will be pushed to the buffer. And then there will be a single thread to handle the computation. Okay, this, this is how we handle, this is how we implement the row group level parallel IO. On the right side, the right, the right picture shows how we implement the file level parallel IO. 
for task one, there is also a buffer. And on the left side of the uh, buffer, there is a IO thread pool. And then there will be two threads. Each, each of the thread will read a single uh, packet file. So the two packet file can be handled in, in parallel. Okay. Let's go to the next part. Column level parallel I.O. For column level parallel I.O, we split a logical packet file into a group of column family, which is a physical, physical packet file. And each column family contains a few columns. Spark SQL will read different column family in parallel. By default, uh, for example, uh, in, in, this, in this example, there are six columns for the packet file. By default, all the six columns will be in a single packet file, but we introduce the column family. So we can, we can put the column A, B, and C in a column family in a physical packet file. And then we put the column D, E, and F in another column family or another physical packet file. So the task one can read these columns in parallel. In data warehouse area, sometimes there are maybe more than 100 columns for each table. So without, when without the column family, the packet file may contain more than 100 columns. And each task can only read these columns in a single task, uh, in a single thread. But after we introduce the column family, we can split the 100, 100 columns into, uh, for example, 10 column, column family. So we can read the 100 columns in, in 10 uh, threads. In our, uh, in our benchmark test, the parallel I.O. boosted the Spark SQL by 10%. Okay, let's go to the asynchronous I.O. To be more specific, it should be asynchronous spill. On the top of this picture, it shows the vanilla, vanilla spark spill. And the spark spill have two steps. The first step is that the spark, the spark task will handle the data, finish the data computation, and then push the data into the buffer. The buffer is in the memory. And when the buffer is full, then Spark SQL will stop the task, stop the task, and, and then flush the data from the buffer to the file. After the flush, then the buffer is clean, it's empty. And then the new data can be, can be calculated and pushed to the buffer. We noted that during the data spill, the calculation is stopped. Okay. Um, and then we implement an uh, asynchronous spill. With, with this, with the, uh, with the asynchronous spill, we, the, the spill will have three steps. And we split the buffer into two buffers, buffer one and buffer two. So step one is that the spark will uh, calculate some data and then push to buffer one. When buffer one is full, we go to the next step. Then Spark will flush the data from buffer one to the spear files, to, to the spear file. At the same time, the new data will be handled, will be calculated, and then pushed to buffer two. When buffer two is full, then the Spark will flush the the data from buffer two to the spear file. At the same time, Spark will keep processing the new data and push it to buffer one. So with this, with, uh, with the asynchronous spear, Spark will, will never stop processing data, new data. This, uh, this is why we can boost the Spark SQL jobs with the asynchronous IO. Okay, let's go to the, the last part, the future work. In the 
near future, we will do some, we will keep doing some optimizations for the Spark SQL. The, one, the first part is IO, the, the second part is computation. For IO optimization, we will implement adaptive column family. That means that uh, we may adaptively split the data into different column families according to the query history. He says that we, we will implement a smart cache. We will cache the data or cache, cache the result or cache the intermediate data or even cache the, the raw data according to the his, uh, query history to accelerate the Spark queries. The, the second part is computation. Now Spark support vectorized reader, but the calculation is in a tuple at a time way. So we want to implement vectorized computation, vectorized execution engine. Another plan is that we, we try to implement some of the commonly used operators, such as hash join and hash aggregate with native codes to accelerate the, the computation. That's all for my for my sharing. Thank you.